Okay, so let's get started. So, once again, here we are at 5.3 exercises. So, here we're going to practice once again how to enter. Uh, for now, I just want you to get the concept down, and then next time around, we can go ahead and exercise how to journalize the whole thing. Okay, so for now, let's just uh, understand how we enter this information into the inventory worksheet. So once again, when we talked about the inventory worksheet, so this is what I was talking about, right? Here, um, whoa, whoa. here at this little top section here, right, we have two sections. The, the middle portion or the majority of the portion is going to be your purchases. It even says right at the very top, it's your purchase expense. Then when you go down to the um, right side, you notice that it says inventory on hand. So this is where your beginning inventory lies, okay? And then of course, when we go down to the bottom half, right, here's the, that table that we're looking at where we calculate our net purchases and we calculate our costs, our uh, goods available as well as our cost of goods sold, right? In the middle section, down below where it says quant uh, quantity, cost, and um, the total cost, that's going to be your workspace. So whether we solve for um, the cost of goods sold or for the ending inventory, this is a perfect way to keep track of it right here, right? To make sure that we hit uh, the, uh, the total number of things that we costed. And that's where you can go ahead and um, tally up or add up the columns to get exactly what you need, right? Instead of having to calculate each one individually, this is where you can um, place your work, okay? And then last but not least, this section right here, again, we're not going to talk about it today, but we'll see um, when we dive into Chapter 5 Review, which is next week, this is where we're going to dive in on how uh, returns, allowances, and discounts actually affect your, per, your uh, periodic inventory, right? If it decreases it, right, because it's a contra account, we also have to subtract it out of our net purchases. So again, that's gonna be something that we learn later on, but for now, let's just focus on how to actually utilize the worksheet uh, for this scenario. So that is it, and that's how the entire worksheet looks like. Okay, so first off, we're going to start with the very first one, which is the scenario here. So scenario number one says that your inventory um, method is periodic FIFO. Okay, assume that all purchases were made on an account. Okay, so in this case, we're not going to practice journalizing yet. Okay, we're only going to be practic practicing how to enter the information in. Once we get comfortable, so the next time around, so the next one that we learn for LIFO, then we'll start practicing it. So in this case, on April 5th, we made a purchase of a thousand toys at $5 each with the freight costing you $100. So once again, I'm gonna go to my inventory worksheet. I'm gonna fill in the date, which was April 5th. And I'm gonna actually gonna fill out my table on the things that I know. So if I know that I purchased a thousand items, and I know that it cost me $5 each with a freight costing me 100, that's where I can go ahead and proceed on filling out the rest of the table. So I'm gonna format it real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what's my purchase price here? Uh, that would be 5,000. Yes, your quantity times your unit price to give you a total of $5,000, okay? Now, what is my total cost gonna be? Uh, the 5,000 plus the 100 equals uh, 5,100. Perfect, good. And then lastly, let's solve for my cost of goods sold. I mean, sorry, my cost per item. I know it's five dollars and ten cents. Um, I took the unit price plus the freight and divided it by the quantity, and I, that's how I got it. Okay, that works too. <laughs> um, but okay, good. That that's a good way. Again, accounting, right? There are numerous ways as long as you get the answer correct, and that is the correct answer. It is five dollars and ten cents. 
okay so in this case you could also do this you take your total cost which is the 5100 and divide it by the 5000 I'm sorry the 1000 okay so total cost divided by quantity to give you a total of five dollars and ten cents excellent All right. so let's see what happened next on April 10 Okay, we purchased another 750 units at $5.75 each with the freight costing you 75. So once again, we're doing April 10. We have 750 units costing at $5.75 each with a freight of 75. So what is going to be my purchase price? $4,312.50. Good. So for all of you guys who took the Excel class, if you guys are good with this, you guys are going to notice this. You can apply the formula dragging this formula all the way down. With okay. the fill handle. The fill yeah. handle. Correct. Okay, so there you go. Uh, for uh, 4312 50 Same thing, you can apply the fill handle tool here. So what is my total cost going to be for this batch right here? Four thousand three hundred three hundred eighty seven dollars and fifty cents. Correct. All right. And you can also apply the fill handle in this uh, column, too, if you sell referenced it correctly. Right. If you took the uh, total cost divided by the quantity, you should be able to apply the formula down here, too. So what is my total cost per item? Five eighty five. Five dollars and eighty five cents. Yes. And notice this. If I were to just click and drag and then I were to, you know, reveal <coughs> the decimals, right? They're all even. None of it is going to be rounded for now. Okay? So that's that's a good thing. That means when we do our calculations, we should be getting um, even answers. So I'm going to hide those real quick. Okay? All right. So there we go. That's the second batch that we have here. So let's take a look at the third one. On April 20th, we purchased another 200 units at $6 each, with the freight costing you $20. 200 at $6 each, with a freight of $20. So what is my purchase price here? $1,200. Yep. 1220 uh, That's your total cost. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. No worries. So 1200 and then plus your 20 gives you your total cost of 1220. All right. So then what is going to be my cost per item? $6.10. $6.10. Once again, another even number. Okay. Doing good so far. So what happened next on April 25th? Bought another 500 units at 625 each. Okay, with a freight of 50. So again, April 25th, 500 items at $6.25 each with a freight of 50. So what's my total purchase price for this batch? It's free, uh, 3125 Mm-hmm. And my total cost? Three thousand one hundred and seventy five. Good. And my cost per item is going to be six thirty five. Six dollars and thirty five cents each. So all of these are even numbers, okay? Again, this is just an example. We'll <laughs> see other ones where we actually have to actually do rounding. So now that we are here. What's the last thing that you know about this scenario? What happened on April 30th? We have a total of 600 units on hand. Someone actually physically counted them on that day. Correct. So what is that considered? Inventory. Inventory. Ending inventory. Correct. Ending. So oh, ending, ending okay. inventory. We have a total of 600 units. Okay, so I'm going to plug it down here, right? Because now I have to solve for the above information. So for, first rule of thumb is we got to total up our columns. So go ahead and use the equal sum or however you want to total them up. Okay. 
right? So I plug it in and I get 2450. Now, of course, if you're good at Excel, you know that you can apply the, um, the, the formula left, right, down, and up. So in this case, I can go ahead and um, use my fill handle tool and drag it all the way down. Okay. All right, but of course, I got to format my cells to look exactly how I want it. Okay, there you go. So here, I've already calculated it for you, but let's go ahead and discuss what they are. So in total, I have 2,450 items. Okay. And in total, it cost me 13,637.50. All right. With a total freight of 245, which gives me a grand total total cost of 1388,250. Okay. All right. We don't need to sum up our total for the cost per item because at this point, we're supposed to leave them in batches. We don't need to take an average cost or just to total up the sum for that one. No point. Same thing for the uh, unit cost here. Okay. So you can clear out that formula if you need to. All right. So there you go. We have now we finished this section of the table. So now we can go ahead and fill in the rest of our table. So first things first is, what was my total quantity purchases? 2,450. Correct. And how much was the purchase price for it? The 1,337.50. Uh, Correct. Okay. So again, we don't have any returns or allowances because what you do here is if you did have a return or allowances, essentially how you find your subtotal is, is going to be your 2,450 or your per net, your purchases, subtract any returns and allowances. So in this case, I get the same number because I don't, I didn't, I didn't have any returns or allowances. Okay. There. Now, what does freight do? Does freight increase your quantity? No. No, it doesn't. But does it increase your cost? Yes. Yes, it does. It increases your grand total cost. So in this case, I'm going to attack on my 245 right here. So I'm cell referencing everything. And then now the formula here is that I'm going to add my freight. So in this case, of course, freight doesn't increase your quantity, so that stays the same. However, it does increase your total cost, which is to the 13.88250. So again, um, the guidelines are right here in parentheses on the left, left, left hand corner. So if you kind of figure it out right here, you apply the purchases, you subtract your um, total um, returns and allowances to get an equal of your total, a subtotal. Then you're gonna add your freight to get an equal of your net purchases. So there is your net purchases, which is exactly what we have right up here, okay? So yes, it's kind of doing double work, but in this case, it's because in case we do have a purchase returns and allowances, we can fill that information right here, okay? So now that I'm going to go ahead and now solve for my bottom section here, which is the other half. So here, the cost of goods sold. So let's start with our beginning uh, beginning balance. Did we have any beginning inventory? No. No. In this case, we're starting from scratch, so we have nothing there. So then, what about our net purchases? We solved it from right above. So right here, we're going to copy this information from right above. Okay? And then now we're going to solve, once again, how much your goods available is. Which, again, it's going to be your beginning plus your net purchases to get your total goods available. In this context, it's going to stay the same because we didn't have any beginning inventory. All right? Right. Now we are finally going to be doing the bottom part where we solve for our cost of goods sold. Okay, we're given one criteria. We're given or two criteria, right? We have a, um, a goods available and we're also given how much ending balance we have. So therefore, with assuming that everything goes through, 
how many items did I sell or sold? How many? How much? How many items did I sold? Eighteen hundred and fifty. Correct, right? I take my goods available. <clears throat> I subtract my ending balance to get my total quantity of goods available. I mean, um, cost of goods sold to be eighteen fifty. Okay, so now this is where we're going to actually start applying the concept of FIFO and calculating our cost of goods sold, okay? So let's take a look above here. How many batches of inventory do I have? Four. Four, okay? Now just looking in context by the date and everything, which batch did I actually purchase first? The thousand. The thousand, good. Now let's go ahead and figure this out. How many items did I sold in grand total? 1850 1850 so this is what I'm gonna do here so just to save a little extra time here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and equal some the quantity real quick okay and I'm gonna apply that formula all the way to my um, cost my total cost right here so every time I enter something in here I'm gonna always get an ending balance right here okay or at least a total balance here. So we recognize one thing first. We have a thousand items in our very first batch. So I'm going to go ahead and place that right here. So if I sold my first thousand items, all right, okay, in this context, at what cost does it cost me to sell each thousand item? Five dollars and ten cents. Five, five dollars and ten cents. So here, I can choose this. I have two options, right? I have the choice where, in this case, I know I sold a thousand. Hold on, I, I put this way down, too too far down. So one thousand. Oh, okay, I'm gonna copy this from here. So um, I have a thousand items, right? It's gonna cost me five dollars and ten cents. In this context, I can either calculate my total amount that is. Uh, excuse me. Can 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 you please meet your wife? Right, thank you. So here, I can either calculate my total cost. All right, by applying my formula, a thousand times five dollars and ten cents would give me a grand total of fifty-one hundred. But what I notice here is that I'm getting rid of the entire batch. I don't need to calculate that. I can just simply see here that if I'm going to get rid of the entire batch, how much does the entire batch cost me? Five thousand one hundred. Exactly. So in this context, I could have just simply just Instead of calculating it, I could have just simply said, well, instead because I'm getting rid of the entire 1,000 batch, I'm just going to get I'm just going to get rid of the entire 5,100 um, items or cost. OK, now notice this, right? I have a running balance right here. So I sold a thousand items. How many more do I need to sell? 850 850 so now that our first batch is eliminated any way that you want to do it whether you want to highlight it or any ways that you can figure out that I've already got rid of it do it so in this case I'm gonna highlight it yellow because I got rid of it already now what's the next batch that we have here it's uh, for 750 750 now are we gonna use all of it or some of it all of it we're gonna use all of it so right here another um, thing here right here we're gonna get rid of another 750 items so in this context right we can just simply say we're getting rid of the entire thing so therefore it's gonna cost me four thousand three hundred and eighty seven dollars now I'm going to sell reference this so you guys can know when I post the answers where this number came from okay it's either you multiply the 750 by the three dollars and 85 and 85 cents or you can simply just take the whole entire amount so now that I've done that I can go ahead and say well I got rid of this in batch that got rid of this entire batch right here okay and I have a total of 1750 that I sold how many more do I need to sell to get to 1850 100 you need 100 more items so here 
I know I need 100 items to get me a grand total of 1850. Now, because I'm using my batches, right? I already got rid of my first batch. I already got rid of my second batch. Which batch is going to become next? For the April 20th. April 20th, all right? And in this case, am I selling all of it or some of it? Just some of it. Some of it, right? We're only selling 100 items out of the 200. So in this context, I actually have to calculate the actual cost per item. So in this case, I do need to utilize this um, $6.10, okay? So remember, why am I using $6.10? That's the cost per item. That's the cost per item that we calculated, right? Because again, when we sell our items, we want to ensure that we cover all of our costs. So in this case, I'm not... I'm not having the customer pay for just only the six dollars for just the product. I'm also them having them cover the 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 cost to get the items to my door, right? I'm gonna have them pay for the shipping too. So in this case, my total cost of goods sold is gonna include the twenty dollar freight to ship the item to the store. So in this case, it's gonna be six dollars and ten cents. All right, so again, I've already self-referenced it, so now I can apply the formula, right? I'm going to multiply them across, and how much is going to be my total cost for selling 100 items? $610. $610, right? So now I, I have to remember that I, only, I use this batch, but I'm not, I can't highlight it or anything like that. You can use another color to indicate that you still have it, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is because I didn't get rid of the entire thing. All right? Now notice this, because I kept a running balance, I auto it automatically calculated that I have 1850 um, right, items sold, and it's gonna cost me a total of $10,097.50, okay? So again, all I did was an equal sum right here to get the total, total cost of here to get um, 10,000, um, zero, 97.50 okay and where can i plug this number in directly into the cost of good sold okay right there okay and then again how do i solve for my ending inventory well you would take um your total cost um, for goods for the hundred that you still have left from April 20th, and then also the 500 units uh, from April 25th, their total cost, and um, sum the sum of that together. Good, that's one way that you can do it. Okay. See, but here you have to do ca do calculations, right? You not only do you have to do the calculation for the hundred items at the six dollars and ten cents you have to add those numbers together in this case that's completely correct right that's one way of solving for ending inventory but in this case i can also solve for ending inventory by taking the total goods available subtracting out how much i sold to get me a grand total of the $3,785. And in context, if you want to double check your work or triple check your work, calculate it. Do the 100 times the six, uh, $6.10, which is 610. Add it to this um, 3,175, and do you get the same number? Yes. Yes, yes. you do, okay? So again, that's another way that you can triple and double check your work. All right. Now we officially are done and solved for my inventory worksheet. So now I have to do my last thing, which is to convert my inventory into inventory. Okay. So there you go. There I'm going to go ahead and pull up my general journal over here. Okay. And now I'm going to journalize it. So. What's the first thing I'm going to journalize? Uh, well, you didn't have a beginning balance. Okay. So I would start with um, 4.30. Good. The date, right? We're at the end of... And the description would be um, ending balance. Okay. Now, 
Okay. What did I buy? Did I tell you what you bought? Oh, just units. Thousand units? Okay, we just bought units. So in this case, you can generalize this as just plain inventory. So in this kind of context, right, I'm looking at converting from a purchase expense into inventory. So instead of doing an ending balance, right, what is that? What essentially is ending balance? What are you doing? What is that going to be? That's your Sorry, inventory, right? Hand? Exactly. Yes. It's your inventory. So in this case, I'm going to debit my inventory. Okay. And I know what balance it is because I solved for it earlier, right? I solved for it in my worksheet. Okay. So how much was my ending balance? The, you want the 600 units or the uh, 3,785? Okay, so so this is where the idea where um, the monetary assumption comes into play, right? Can we journalize that we have 600 I units? No. no. No, you have to do it in terms of dollars or right. in terms of value. So in this case, what number can am I going to put put there? The thirty-seven eighty-five. Correct. Okay. So thirty-seven eighty-five. Okay. What else am I going to journalize? Your profit or what you sold. Okay. So uh, <laughs> be careful when you say that because cost of goods uh, yeah, sold <clears throat> is not your profit, right? Okay. That's yeah, what, yeah, okay. that, well, that's what it costs you to sell. That's what it costs you. That's your expense that you paid for already. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, so good. So we recognize what was it? Cost of goods sold. Good. Yes. Correct. Okay. So we got to recognize our cost of goods sold. Okay. Now. We already solved for our cost of goods sold. What was it? The 1097? Correct, right? That's the whole purpose of the worksheets, to calculate how much cost it took us to sell 1850 items. So in this case, it cost me $10,097.50. So that's where I'm going to place it right there. Okay? Now, now that I've figured that part out, what are going to be my credits? So in this case, where am I converting my inventory from? Or in this case, where did I originally purchase my inventory and placed it? Well, you purchased it on account. Good. But where did, where did I debit it or journalized it as? <laughs> Accounts payable? Not accounts payable, right? This isn't. This is, we're not dealing with liabilities right now. We're dealing with where did you sales? Not sales. We didn't sell anything. This whole entire thing wasn't sales. Okay. Where did we originally place our items? When, in inventory. In okay. Did we really place into inventory? Would it be cost of cost of goods? Cost of goods sold is what we sold it for. Okay. So if you guys go back and to chapter five point one, every time you make a purchase of periodic inventory, where do we place oh. it? Purchase expense. Purchase yes. expense. Yes. So in this case, remember, remember when we talked about this, right? Every time we make a purchase of uh, periodic inventory. We're essentially placing it into this purchase expense bucket. Okay? Now, now that my bucket is full or I've stopped making purchases, right? Now I'm going to transfer and dump them in its respective locations, right? In this case, I'm dumping my bucket and I'm putting it either in my inventory or in my cost of goods sold. So in this case, my bucket is full. I'm transferring it over into another account. And this is what's happened, right? It's split between the two because 
I originally bought 2,550 units, but I sold 1850 of them. So I don't actually have all 2,450 items. They're all dispersed in other accounts. So in this case, that's why I solved for this, right? I have ending inventory, meaning out of the 2,450 items I originally purchased for, only 600 of them are actually going to be still in my store. So in this case, that's exactly what this notion is, that I'm taking the bucket of my purchase expense and I'm dumping them into the other two accounts, okay? So again, my purchase expense, what else do I have? Cost of goods available. Okay, mm, not for yeah. this context. Okay. What always is usually associated when you make your purchases? Oh, freight expense. Yes, correct. Freight expense. Okay. So here, um, how much was my total um, purchases that I purchased? Just only the units only without the freight. What number was that? Do you got it? Here you go. All right. If in other words, you could also look at it this way. You want the total without the expense, freight expense? Correct. What did I That's originally purchase the entire purchase price for? Thirteen thousand six hundred and thirty-seven uh, fifty. Correct. And then next one is how much was the cost of my freight? The two hundred and forty-five dollars. Yes, the two hundred and forty-five dollars. Okay. Boom. Right. I have to empty out both of those bins, right? Because in a sense, in in a sense, they're all contributing to inventory, right? But I'm using it as a placeholder account. It's just there temporarily until I re recognize it at the end of the given period. Okay. So here I am. At um, fill I filled out my journal. Now let's confirm that uh, my debits match my credits. Okay. So in this case, I'm gonna equal sum this. Okay. All right, so I have a total of 13,802.50 $13 on my left side, and I also have the same 13,882.50 on my right side. So here, where do we see this number? Um, your uh, net purchase. Correct. And it's also in your goods available also. Correct. So again, um, in this context, like because we haven't introduced beginning inventory yet, it you would associate this with your goods available. Okay. So there you go. Boom, boom. We matched our inventory worksheet. We matched our conversion journal entry. So now we are complete with this transaction. Okay. So any questions, any confusions on how to fill out this worksheet? There's confusion. But that's on my part because I'm still trying to minus and add stuff. But I, it's more just wrapping your head around you, just documenting the price and the items. Correct. Or unit. Yeah, yeah. Correct. You but know. you also have yeah. to keep in mind. Like I am. Yeah. You're yeah. you're you're confused or you're good. I'm good. I'm I'm just you know I'm getting that I hold the concept. Okay. Again. We have one more problem to um, go over. Now, if you want an extra problem, we can go ahead and do some ad libs and just throw in random numbers, okay? If that will help you, okay? Go for it, I'll watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, so here's the first problem here, and we, saw, we solved for what the ending inventory is. So now let's go ahead and Let's dive on to the next scenario. So we're complete with this entire scenario here. We ended on April 30th. So let's see what our next context is here. So now it says here, continue on with your inventory, right? So we're gonna be using the information from above to, um, con to convert, oh wait, I'm, on, I'm reading the wrong one. <laughs> there you go, number three, continue the inventory exercise. Okay, your inventory method is uh, periodic and it's FIFO. So here, now 
we have a beginning balance, which we know because we kept track of our inventory, right? We had a total of 600 items on hand. All right, so let's go ahead and take a minute right here. So again, I attached two different worksheets, so one for question one and one for question three. So now we have a new factor here. We have beginning inventory, okay? Now, we're gonna go ahead and use our new worksheet, but let's take a look at our uh, previous worksheet, right? Since it's, it's a continuation of the previous scenario, right? In this context, we have 600 items, okay? Now let's look, let's look at our batches. How was our batches distributed, right? We still had 100 left from my April 20th batch, and then I have 500 from my April 25th batch, right? So in yes. this case, when I do work on my second worksheet, under my inventory on hand, so this is what is currently in your inventory, all right? So we have that 600, so again, we're gonna transfer that we know that we have 100 items plus 500 items, okay? So again, I'm gonna apply my little total here. So equal sum, all right? Oh, one more over. Okay, so equal sum. Okay. Wait, what, work, what worksheet are you working on? I'm on the new one. The second one. I'm I'm okay. So there's two there's two worksheets, right? Once you've completed the first one, right? You can't go back and edit any information, right? This worksheet's done. So now I'm transferring the information into the new worksheet because now I'm starting a new cycle or I'm starting a new um, accounting period. So in this case, I need to start fresh all over again so it's another clean worksheet so if you are using the excel worksheet it should be um inventory worksheet question number three mm -hmm. okay so here i'm just transferring the information because one thing i had here was on april 30th i should have had 600 units on hand which we know from solving from the previous worksheet right we solved that we had a total of the 500 units from the last batch and we also have 100 left remaining from this batch right here on 420. So now I'm going to go back to my inventory worksheet and I'm going to enter that in so then I can recognize that my beginning inventory is true and I'm utilizing the inventory on hand section which is the far right table. Okay, so notice this, remember they're broken down right here, right? Inventory on hand purchases. Okay. So I know for a fact that the 100 um, items are going to cost me $6.10 while my 500 items or the 500 items are going to cost me $6.35. So once again, I'm going to multiply them across to give me 610 plus my um, 300 and 175 right to give me a grand total of my ending inventory to be so I already plugged in my equal sum formula here so I should have a total of 3,000 785 which we do know that pan that that works out fine because that's exactly what we solved for right here right it was 3785 and we're just transferring it over to the new inventory worksheet so this right here is my beginning inventory right that's what I started out with that's what I still have you know okay there you go now that I have my beginning inventory right here now I can go ahead and proceed with the rest of the scenario, which is recording the rest of my purchases. Okay. Is everyone good with me so far right here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first <clears throat> things first, on May 5th, we made a purchase of 500 units at $6.25 each with a freight costing you 
$50. So once again, another purchase of the of that. So what I'm going to record here is 55 five, 500 units at 625 with a freight of 50. All right. So what is going to be my total um, purchase price here? Uh, just purchase price is going to be five hundred six dollars and twenty five cents. Oh, purchase price. Oh, purchase oh price. sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Price. No worries. So my purchase price was three thousand one hundred twenty five. Okay, so add your freight, and what's my total cost? Thirty one seventy five. Mm -hmm. And then, Felipe, what is my av my cost per item? Uh, bu 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 bu. uh, six dollars and thirty five cents. Yes, good. This is the same exact one that we saw from the previous one, but this time, obviously, the date's different. I made the same purchase of batches, and the ch the price didn't change, so I just bought the same amount. Okay, so there you go, six dollars and thirty five cents. Okay, so that's your first batch of inventory that you've purchased, right? Okay. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario. So what happened on May 10? You bought 800 units at $6 each with a freight cost of 80. Good, so here on May 10, purchase 800 items at $6 with a freight of 80. So what is my purchase price here? 4800 4800 mm -hmm. my total cost 4880 4880 and then what is now my cost per item because it's batches so i have to solve for this uh, $6.10 yeah $6.10 okay <clears throat> good excellent so then what has happened next on may 20th Purchase three hundred for six fifteen, and freight fifteen dollars. Okay, so again, um, you purchased three hundred items at six fifteen. Three hundred six fifteen and fifteen dollar freight. Okay. So, uh, what was the date again? Six twenty. Or 520? Yeah, 520. 520. Okay, so 520, May 20th, we bought 300 units at 615 with a freight of 15. So what is my total purchase price? Sorry, let me it should come to 1845. 1845. Okay, what's my total cost? 1860. 1860 and what is my cost per item? Six ten. I mean six twenty, my fault. Yeah, it's six twenty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. No worries. It's okay. All right. And then let's see. Second to last but not least. What did we have what happened on the twenty fifth of May? You purchase a hundred units at six thirty each, okay. with a co freight cost of five. So a hundred items at six thirty, with a freight cost of five dollars. So six or uh, five twenty-five. <coughs> Excuse me, one hundred items at six twenty-five. So sorry, six thirty. Six thirty, yeah. <laughs> with a freight of five dollars. So what is going to be my total purchase price? Six thirty. Six hundred thirty. And then, then six thirty five. Good. And then six dollars and thirty five cents a piece. Excellent. Okay, there you go. Then last but not least, what's the last thing that happened on May thirty first? You had a um someone inventoried everything and you have a total of four hundred units left on hand. Good. So now I have that piece of information. I'm going to scroll down and plug that in, saying that I know at the end of the day I should have 400 left. Okay. 
So now let's go ahead and total up our columns. Okay, so how much did I purchase? 1,700 units. Okay, 1,700 units. Okay, how much was my total purchase price? Okay, what was my total purchase price? Twenty-four seventy. Twenty. Okay, I didn't. Okay, not not. Remember, unit price doesn't count. Okay, so my total purchase price. Okay, because this one, what, what's the purpose of you adding up all the unit prices? Does it matter? No. 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 Because that's we, we we don't care for that. We are not taking, we're not going to calculate all of them and take the average of that one, right? Because in this case, this kind of information is is it's only pertinent to us when we have returns and allowances. So in this case, we don't need to sum up those totals. But the total purchase price here is. Oh, the total cost or the yeah. free expense? The, the total cost of the purchase price. Dang. It, it's, come on, guys. It's 10400 Oh, we see the answer on the screen. Well, I know. Uh, I, well, I, well, no, I, I expect you guys to answer the answer when it's on uh, the screen. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I was waiting to see if anyone got it. I, I was sitting here. I'm like, no, I'm not yeah. going to say it. Let's see if someone else can do it. All right. All right. Okay. okay. No worries. Okay. Don't worry about that. Okay. All right. So then what's my total freight now? 150. 150. And lastly, what is my total, total cost? $10,550. $10,550. $10,550, okay? So, remember, that's just our purchases, okay? So, let's go ahead and solve the rest of our bottom table down here. So, quantity, how much did we purchase in total? 1700 Good, all right. And what did that cost me? The 10400 Yes, good. Yep. Now... Did I have any returns and allowances? In this case, no, I don't have any. So therefore, if I subtract zero from each one, I should just get the same exact amount, okay? Right. Next is freight. Freight, does it add anything to quantity? No. No, oh. but what about the cost? Yes. Yes, it increases it, right? So therefore, we're going to add up our columns. So, of course, uh, we should have the ending of 1700 But what is my total going to be for my total cost here for my net purchases? 10550 Good. All right. So that's that. Now, let's go ahead and see what happens down here. Do we have beginning inventory? Yes. yes 600 we do. And the quantity for that was how much? 600. Correct. We have 600 in grand total of beginning inventory that we carried over from, carried over from the previous period. So now how much in grand total was that 600 on hand? $3,785. There you go. So $3,785. Now, this is where we compute and bring down the information here. What was your net purchases? 1700 Okay. At 10500 So now we can calculate our total goods available. So in this case... What is my, uh, so if I'm adding together my 600 plus my 1700, how much should I have available to sell? 2300. 2300. In this case, same idea here. We're going to add our total costs together to bring our total goods available to sell is $14,335. Okay. Good. So now, 
we have to solve for our cost of goods sold. So once again, because we're given the, the one thing, which is the ending inventory, how many items did I sell? Nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred, right? If I had twenty three hundred to begin with and I have only four hundred left over, my assumption is I must have sold nineteen hundred items. Okay. So once again, now the option is you either solve for the ending inventory or you solve for the cost of goods sold. And in this case, because we're using the FIFO method, let's exercise using the FIFO method and calculate the cost of goods sold. So once again, I'm going to tally it or um, have this formula in here so that I have some kind of running balance. Okay, so I have an equal sum in the quantity on my workspace as well an equal sum on my total total cost um, on my workspace. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, which item, starting from looking at our purchases and our beginning inventory, which item are you gonna go? Are you gonna get rid of first? The hundred for six ten. Perfect. We're gonna recognize that we have beginning inventory, so those batches are obligated to get be, to be get rid of first. Excuse me, my English. Uh, those uh, those ones are gonna be um, first to go. All right, so again, 100, right? You can either uh, sell references because it's going to, you know, there you go. 100 at $6.10. This is just for purposes only. So you guys know where the numbers come from. And it's going to be for, for 610. Okay, so we got, we sold 100 items. How many more items do we need to sell? 1,800. All right, so what's my next batch then? For the 500. For the 500 in my in my beginning inventory, yes. Right. Once again. Okay. Since we're getting rid of the entire batch, how much was that 500 batch? The 3175. 3175. Okay. Good. So now that we sold a total of 600 items. How many more items do we need to sell? 1,300. 1,300. So, again, I'm going to highlight this so I can, you know, let myself know I got rid of this item. I don't have it anymore, okay? Um, you can black it out, white it out. I don't, I don't care, just as long as you keep those numbers there. They have to still be there because if you change anything in here, you start cell referencing everything, you're going to mess up your entire worksheet. So in this case, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna highlight to let myself know I already used all the that batches. Okay. So with that being said, which batch is gonna come next? From May your 5th. um <clears throat> Yeah, from May 5th. May 5th. Alright, I have five hundred for my first batch here. Am I gonna use some of it or get rid of all of it? All of, all it. of it. All of it. So if I'm going to get rid of all 500 items, how much is it going to cost me in total? Do you need the unit price or just the total price? Just the total price because we don't need to calculate the unit price. We're getting rid of all of it. All the, good. The total price is 31.75. Yes. Okay. I'm only going to sell reference it so you guys know where this number came from. Okay. So I okay. got it from up there. For, for the $6.35. Now you can, um, if it makes it easier for you to just keep your formulas intact, you can just do your um, quantity times your cost and then equal in your total and you just drag that formula all the way down. So all you have to do is just self-reference those, those two numbers and it should automatically calculate for you. But in this case, I'm telling you, we're getting rid of the whole batch. You don't need to have a calculation there, okay? Um, it could save you some extra time, too, if you can just recognize that. But in this case, if you want to do it for practice purposes or practice measures, go ahead and practice that. You're going to take your quantity times your cost, and it should give you your total cost. Okay? So now that we got rid of my 500 batch right here, 
what's next? What? How many more do I need to sell? And which batch am I going to take it out from? So first off, how many more items do I need to sell? I've sold 1,100 so far. You need to sell eight, 800 more. You need to sell 800 more. So let's look at our second batch. What was our second batch? 800. Perfect. I'm going to get rid of this whole entire batch right here. So 800. Okay. How much is it going to cost me to sell that entire batch? Four dollars. Yeah. Got Four dollars and eight hundred and eighty. Okay, good. All right, and again, self-reference so you know where this number came from. So again, it was from um, that batch that we made a purchase on May 10. So once again, I actually got rid of this entire amount right here. So highlight it saying I got rid of it. It's gone. Okay, so now I have a grand total of the 18, the 1900 items I sold right here. So I sold the first 100 from my beginning, the 500 from my beginning, the uh, 500 from my beginning of my purchases, first the first purchase I made, and then the second purchase I made was for the 800. So in grand total, 1900, and because I used my equal sum formula here, I've automatically calculated a bunch of hashtags. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> it is um, grand total $11,840 even. Okay, so right here, I will sell reference it here. All right, so now how much should be my ending inventory? 400. No, okay. How much total cost is my going to be my 400? Or what's my cost well, of my ending inventory? It would be the um, 1860 plus the 635. Uh, okay. If you do it that way and you solve it from up here, you just add these two numbers together, that's also correct. Okay. So I guess I'll, I'll plug it in here. So if I were to go ahead and add this number plus this number should get you the um, 24.95 okay and also another way to solve this as well is you take your goods available subtract what you sold and you should get the same 24.95 all right good job guys all right so that's how you apply that concept in uh, the beginning with having using FIFO to cost out the cost of goods sold, but also introducing the idea of having beginning inventory. You're gonna get rid of what you started out with, right? What you transferred from the previous uh, worksheet, and then go ahead and dive in and get rid of the purchases that you've made. All right? Yeah. Okay, so everyone good so far? And yeah, how to use the inventory worksheet? Is it getting comfortable now? I I was listening the entire time. I think what's throwing me off is just one. My worksheet doesn't convert into an Excel. It goes into the do, the Google Doc. Okay. So it's not the same. And then just you going back and forth on the screen and just hearing the numbers. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it's just like really confusing me. Okay. So um when you're downloading the worksheet you can download as an excel worksheet but even when i choose it off of the google classroom under excel and then it says open with and all i have is app sheet and google sheets right I don't so, have excel. Yeah, so remember when you're on that one that screen you need to click the three dots to open it up in a new window and then actually download it as an Excel file. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that right after this. Okay, I just wanna make sure, is everyone clear with this? We're gonna, we'll do another exercise after this, okay? Okay, okay, my quick, Felipe, quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, are we supposed to be doing a lot? I just been paying attention, I printed it out, I've been doing it uh, on paper. Just to get the con, I, I mean, I get Excel. I don't know how to use Excel, mm -hmm. but is would you like us to use Excel or just um, for me? Paying attention seems to go a little easier than having to switch back and forth mm -hmm. from screens. Mm -hmm. Whatever makes it comfortable for you. If you prefer to write everything down and on a piece of paper and then apply it to Excel, whatever way it allows you to be able to understand the idea that's behind this, 
use whatever it makes comfortable for you. I made it available for you in all three formats, right? I have Excel, I have it as a Word document, and it also has a PDF for you to print. So whatever it makes okay. it easier for you to understand and to practice as well. All right, thank you. So again, you, if you're printing them out, that's more power to you because then you can use those sheets over and over and over again to practice over and over again. Or like what I've done is I went, I have my, there's background noise, I can't. Okay, so what I did was I have a split screen. I use the Word version of the PR inventory FIFO. So this way I could fill it in as you're doing the Excel sheet, then later after class, I can go into Excel and actually practice doing that. So this way I'm not actually double writing, but I'm printing, you know, putting the information in. So this way I can refer back to my Word worksheet and make sure I did everything correctly. Mm, okay. Excellent. I like that. Yeah, yeah I think I, that's, that'll be some good practice for me. I like that. Yes. So again, I like I made it available for whatever platform that you feel the most comfortable for learning this material. Some people need to write it down first and then apply it onto the the um, whatever platform they want to do, whether you use the Word document or whether you use the Excel. Now remember, you can access this classroom with multiple devices if it makes it easier for you. Now, of course, I have to assume that not everybody has three or four or five laptops on them, okay? You can log in with your phone if you feel more comfortable just listening, but then you, you kind of luck out on the visual aspect where I'm doing the work and you need to be able to follow along, all right? So that's why I provide the videos for you to go ahead and do it again after class. Understand where these numbers come from and look at what I'm doing. All right, whether you're using Excel, the Word sheet, or the PDF, whatever makes it comfortable for you. So again, um, you can access this classroom with multiple devices using the same exact account. So I've had students before log into this classroom using a laptop, of their iPad, and their phone. They had all three devices available on them so that they can see what I'm doing, listen to what I'm doing, and also doing it themselves. All right, again, that's only if you feel that that's going to be the most beneficial for you. Um, I feel like the be most beneficial that you could do is do the work ahead of time. Try to solve it on your own, but obviously this is the first time. So now the next couple concepts after this, it's going to be similar if not um Sim it's the, the exercise is going to be the similar, but the way that we calculate is going to be different. So if you're going to, if you can be able to do that, try to do the work at, um, on your own, come to class and try to see where you made the mistake or where you're confused, then that will also benefit you in understanding this material as well. So again, it's just, it's based on how you feel that benefits yourself on how to learn this, uh, to understand and learn this concept, okay? Not everything applies, like, for one person can apply for another, okay? Uh, so people, um, they like to learn by, you know, printing out the worksheet and just doing it over and over again. Repetition, okay? So... Good. So again, this isn't the first time we're going to be taking a look at this worksheet. If you've noticed on the Google Classroom, I've uploaded, let me see. A lot. I've got them all printed out. In exactly. Different I, folders. exactly. I have one folder with 5.1 and 5.2. I got another folder with, I mean, I, I've got all your information in different folders right on my desktop Perfect. that I can go into. Mm -hmm. Um. There's one thing that's like what you were just saying. I started doing the word worksheet last night mm -hmm. and I stopped myself. And here's the reason I have realized I've done so much different forms of accounting in all my different jobs. Okay. That as I sat here, I, I got to thinking I better wait and have her go over this with me at least once before I start doing something that might confuse me in class tomorrow. <laughs> I actually thought about that last night because I've done, I've just realized like in the last few days, I've done so much accounting in my life, mm -hmm. not just with number, uh, not like with say, um, totals, like with cost, but like when I was a label room traveler, I had to count labels. I was. So 
Okay, so now that we solved for my uh, ending inventory and we have the cost of goods sold, now let's go ahead and complete my conversion entry. So once again, I'm using my journal once again on my Excel worksheet just because um, on the Word document, you have a separate little table for yourself. Okay, so first off first, we're going to do it's May 31st now. Okay, so now that I am done with my worksheet, let's go ahead and do my conversion entry. So what am I going to recognize here? If I'm converting into inventory, what am I going to be journalizing? Oh, the four hundred never left. Yeah. Right. Correct. So, uh, the price was I can't remember. I wrote it down somewhere. Don't worry. But my main concern is what account are you actually gonna? What where, where where does that four hundred? Where are you putting it? Oh, inventory. debit. Debit where? Which account? Inventory. In inventory. Inventory. Yes, because we have ending inventory, right? We're converting and placing it into inventory. So again, this 400, right? Let's take a look at this, the worksheet. How much was it for? $2,495. Exactly. So $2,494. So I'm just going to self-reference that real quick. So the $2,495, OK? What else do I have to recognize? Cost of goods sold. That's a, yes, absolutely correct. Cost of goods sold. All right. In this case, how much did I solve for my cost of goods sold for? Eleven thousand eight hundred forty. Yes. <laughs> good. All right. So then, okay, good. So now that we recognize my debits, what am I? What's going to be my credits where where am i taking this out from purchase expense good and what else your freight expense okay just to save some time when we copy and paste all right good all right so how much was my purchase for what was my purchases for Ten thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, that's including the freight. Oh, sorry. Ten thousand four hundred dollars. There you go. Now how much was the total freight? A hundred and fifty dollars. A hundred and fifty dollars. Good. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a real quick look at this. Now go ahead and equal your sums just, just for fun. Okay, so equal your sums. Right? And what are you going to notice? What am I missing in here? So I have 14,335 on one side and I have 10,550 on one side. What am I missing that belongs in the credit side? Your beginning balance. Exactly. Yes. Beginning balance of my inventory. So in this case, what was my beginning balance? You guys remember? Here, oh, I mean, here it is. It's that three thousand seven hundred seven hundred dollars and fifty. Eighty. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. So that's my missing point is that I have to get rid of my what I began with because in this context, if you think about it, do I still have my beginning inventory? No. No, that's the first thing I got rid of. So in this case, um, this is what you're going to do. This is actually going to be directly out of your inventory. So this is where we're going to be using the same exact um, idea here. There is no such thing as inventory beginning and inventory ending. They're essentially, they're, they are exactly the same inventory um, account. They're the same. Okay. One is you're taking out from it and one is you're adding into it. That's it. That's all it is, okay? So um, for practice purposes only, I'll allow you to go ahead and write beginning and ending on the, like in your journal, but just know that there is no such thing as a beginning inventory account and an ending inventory account. They're, they go to the same place. One is just you're taking out from it and the other one is you're adding into it. So um, like I said, Okay, if it helps you to memorize it or helps you understand how the transaction is working, 
then go ahead and uh, make that note in there. But in this case, it's coming out from the same account. So in this case, it was for the 3,000, uh, let's see. It was for the 3,785. Boom. Okay, so now I match on both sides 14,335 on the left and on the right. So my debits and my credits match. Okay, any questions so far on how to do the conversion entry or how to do the worksheet in general? No. No? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a blank worksheet that I have here. So I've also uploaded this on the Google Classroom for you. So you have practices practiced of using the inventory worksheet. So again, I should have left it in your um, the student files. Ooh, that's the answers. The student files. It should have been a blank inventory worksheet. So if I pull this up, this is for you to practice. You can print this out. Um, whatever you need to use for it, or if you're using the scenario, just reprint just only that page of just the inventory worksheet, and then you'll be okay. So here I have a blank one, so let's just pretend and create a random scenario, okay? So let's say I'm going to, let's actually go ahead and continue on. So let's say it's now uh, June 1st, right? So let's say uh, May 30th 1st, right? We have, an, we have a beginning inventory of the 400 items, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. What, was, what did I actually have in, in constituting of what I calculated here? What was my 400 items? It's broken up into two items here, right? So I made a purchase of 300 on May 20th, and I made a purchase of 100 on May 20th. 25th. So I'm going to transfer this information over to my inventory on hand. Okay. Into my new worksheet. So here it is. I have 300 and 100. Give me giving me a total of 400 items. Okay, so I'm just going to do a simple quick math right here. 400 items. Okay. And uh, each one, right? What did it what did it cost me for each one? Uh, 610, or, I mean 620 and 635. Correct. So right here, we got 620 and 635. You said 635, right? Of course I did. Yes. <laughs> Just making sure. Okay. I, I forgot what the number was, so I was actually relying on you <laughs> to give me the information. Okay. So there you go. Okay, and format it how you'd like, but in this case, they should be even out numbers, and you should be able to apply the formula out here. So the 400 uh, items that were transferred over is for the $2,495, okay? So that's exactly what we solved for from the previous one. So now let's go ahead and enter in random information, okay? So if on June 1st, let's say, I purchased another 800 units. Oh, 800 units. And I'm going to say it cost me $6.15 once again. So what's my total purchase price here? 4920 Good. And my freight, I'm just going to say, was 50 So now, how much am I, how much is my total cost going to be? 4970 4970 so let me go ahead and uh, there you go 4970 so okay and how much is it going to cost me per item Six twenty-one. Six twenty-one. Is that six twenty-one even? No, no. six twenty-one and a quarter. <laughs> okay. <Sorry>. Yes. <clears throat> so again, this isn't an even number, but that's okay. 
we can figure things around it, okay? So again, let's say on June 5th, okay? I mean another purchase of 1,200 items, all right? And this time it dropped significantly, so now it's $6 now. So what's my total um, purchase price? It's 7200 7200 Good. Now, let's say freight cost me $120. Good. So, what is now my cost per item? $6.10. $6.10 even? Yes. I'm just, I'm just going to confirm, all right? I'm just going to display it on here just in case it isn't. So, all right, so let me make sure that I have, that's good enough, okay? All right, good. So then let's say uh, June, June, June 15, I ended up buying another... 450 items okay and let's say uh it went up once again to 625 that's why i didn't buy too many because it went up too high so what is my purchase price here two thousand eight hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents good and let's say my freight was twenty five dollars <coughs> so what's my total cost here Two thousand eight hundred thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. Making my cost per item to be six dollars and thirty-one cents. Six dollars. Okay, and three zero five 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 four. Okay. I have a, I have rounded it off. Yes. On June first, over where you have cost per item. Mm hmm. I've done the math three times and I keep coming up with uh, six dollars point two one two five. Oh never mind. I was looking at the extras. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like, that doesn't look right. Okay. I was like, you read it exactly how I have it displayed. So I was just like, Okay, what's your question? <laughs> uh yeah, no. the extra the, the extra zero was throwing me off. Never mind. No worries. <laughs> I'm just ensuring to make sure that like I see every single decimal point because again now, when we actually cost a goods sold, right, if I'm selling thousands of items at one time, if I round too early, I can potentially lose a profit right there. I could, If I sold a thousand items and I rounded, let's say, the that 630, I, I rounded it down because it's a five, right? If I rounded to 630, then I gain a profit, right? If I sold a thousand items, I gain a profit, right, of one dollar. Now, let's say I round it up, right, to $6.31. I lose a dollar. Okay. So, again, that's that's a whole profit management kind of ordeal right there, understanding the cost. If you're costing at a high cost, then your profit's going to be low. But if you cost at a low, it will your profits will be high. Okay. So, again, uh, that's definitely um, extra accounting that you don't need to know. But it is rule of thumb that it, for my for my class, I'm not going to teach. I, I will teach the equal round. However, I will only apply it for when I think it's necessary. So in this case, I'm going to cost my items and I'm going to keep the unit cost as, as is right there, leaving it at a decimal. I'm not going to round early. I'm going to round at the end when I solve for um, the cost of goods sold. OK, and we'll take a look at that in, in, in a few. OK. So here, now let's say uh, June 20th, I bought, let's say I bought another 500 units, and this time it was $6.20. What's my total purchase price here? 3100 3100 and let's say my freight was $30. 3130. Okay, making my cost per item to be 6.26. 6.26, okay, even number. 
All right, and then I'm gonna say, lastly, I made a purchase on June 28th. Let's say I purchased a thousand units, and this time it dropped again to six dollars. Right? Oh, Excel is noticing I'm calculating something. So here, <laughs> I have six thousand dollars in my purchase price. Okay, what was my freight? My freight, let's say, was a hundred and fifty dollars. So what's my total cost going to be? Sixty-one fifty. Mm-hmm. Making my total purchase, or my total cost per item, to be six dollars and fifteen cents. Okay. Yes. So now, let's go ahead and calculate my totals now. So then I can tell you how much I I I sold, I guess, or how much I had in ending inventory. So let's go ahead and calculate my total. So which my, how many purchases did I make in grand total? Five. Oh, okay. I mean, in quantity. How much in total uh, <laughs> units did I buy? 3,950. Whoa. Split. When... Okay, let's recalculate that one more time. Okay, equal sum. Okay, 3,950. Okay, and I'm go okay. So um so what what was my total purchases or purchase price? Yeah, I can see why being on Excel might make this a lot faster. Yes. <laughs> Twenty-four thirty-two fifty. Twenty-four thirty-two fifty. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Um, and then what was my total freight? Three seventy-five. Three seventy-five. And then what is my total total cost going to be? Twenty four one twelve fifty. Or twenty yeah, seven. Twenty four four zero seven fifty. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So I'm gonna format that real quick. Okay. So now let's go ahead and solve for our net purchases. So what was the total quantity that I purchased once again? Thirty nine fifty. And what was the purchase price for that? Twenty four um oh thirty two fifty. Good. No returns and allowances. Okay. So therefore um it should be the same number since it's zero. Okay. What about my freight? Freight changes nothing to quantity, but it changes my cost by how much? Three seventy five. Three seventy five. <clears throat> so again, if I add my columns up, I should have 3950 plus now I have a total 2,404,750. Okay. Okay, so now do we have beginning inventory? Yes. Yes, we do. All right? We have the 400 items available and how much were those 400 items? 2495. 2495. Okay. We're going to add our net purchases. So, again, um, I solved my net purchases from right above. So, I'm going to add my 3950 or bring it down. Okay. So, what is my total goods available? Forty three fifty. Forty-three fifty at a grand total of twenty-six eight. No, twenty-six nine zero two fifty. Yep. There you go. Good. All right. And I'm gonna say, hmm, we have twelve hundred units left. Okay. Someone went down to the inventory and they saw, they found out that there's 1,200 units left. Okay? 
Um, okay, yeah, there's 1,200 units uh, left, all right? So how many <coughs> items did I sell? Thirty-one, or fifty? Yeah, thirty-one fifty. Mm. Yes, we sold thirty-one fifty. So once again, now you have the option. You can either choose to solve for ending inventory or solve for the cost of goods sold. If you solve for ending inventory, right, you can't apply the concept that we learned today, which is the FIFO, because you have to understand it in a way where. If you are thinking about it, if you're getting rid of all of the inventory from the very beginning, that means your ending inventory must be the ones that you just bought. All right, that's just another way of understanding it. But in this context, I want you to utilize the cost of goods sold, even though it takes forever to solve. Um, I want you to utilize that because that's the purpose of this scenario. Why are we costing it this way? All right. So again, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my little formula right here. So then I have a running balance. Okay, so equals sum, and I'll highlight the whole column. Okay. And I'm going to drag the formula across. Okay. So now we have the idea of how many items did we sell? What's our grand total that we need to reach? Right, we need to we need to sell three thousand one hundred fifty yes. items, right? right? Yes. So let's take a look. All right, we have our purchases of here. We have five total purchases, but we also have beginning inventory. So essentially, if you line them all up, we have seven items or seven batches to choose from. Okay. So in this case, since we're using FIFO. You could start with your beginning balance of 400 and the 24.95. Absolutely, that, there you go. You have a shortcut because you know you're gonna get rid of the 400 anyway. You don't really need to break it up because at that point, you're getting rid of the whole entire thing. So good, good, good noticing there too. So here, you can split them up, but at the end of the day, you're still gonna take the whole entire beginning balance. In this context, therefore, you're taking the total cost. So in that case, you don't have a uh, cost per item, okay? So good. So now that I sold 400, how many more do I need to sell? A lot. Yeah, Okay. Like 27, 28, 50. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So now that we got rid of our beginning inventory, what batch are we going to start with first? June 1st for the 800. Okay. Are we taking all of it or some of it? All of, all it. of it. We're taking all of it. So we're taking all of it right here. All right. For a fact, I know that if I take all of it, it's going to cost me $4,970. Okay. So now I have 1,200 units. How many more do I need to sell? Okay, we got to keep going. All of the 1,200 units. All the 1,200 units. Good. So we recognize that the second batch that we have is for the 1,200 units, and we're going to get rid of all of it. So in this case, my total cost for the entire batch of the 1,200 was this 730, 730. Seven thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, there we are. Okay, so now let's see what my grand total is. So so far I have twenty four hundred. How many more do I need to sell? I got to keep going. All, all the four fifty. All of the four fifty. Okay, so good. Yep. We need to. We're gonna sell the whole entire four fifty. Okay. And how much was that entire four fifty batch? Uh, for twenty eight thirty seven fifty. Yep. Okay, right there. Okay. So then now we mm. sold a grand total of two thousand eight hundred and fifty. How many more do we actually need to sell? Three hundred. We need to sell three hundred. Let's see. Three hundred gives you exactly three one fifty. Now let's take a look at our batches. Which batch do we have left? The 20th. Mm -hmm. 
we so have we'll a total. Take, uh, 500 so then we'll subtract the 200 we need from there at the cost at 626 mm -hmm. okay so in this case we're not going to subtract it out because we need a, we, we need those 300 items okay yep. now if you subtract that 300 from here to get 200 that's for ending inventory okay. that's what we do have Okay, so in this context, we need to get rid of 300. So again, we're going to take that 626. Uh, where did my mouse go? There it is. So we're going to take that. Oh, my mouse keeps disappearing. We're going to take that 626, and then now we're going to apply the formula because in this case, we're not taking the whole batch. We need to calculate it down to each individual item so that's where we need to go ahead and apply this okay one thousand eight hundred seventy eight dollars okay i think it's because i uh, okay let me reduce the number of decimals there we go one thousand eight hundred and seventy eight dollars okay and now we have a total of three thousand one hundred fifty at a grand total of eight uh, nineteen five hundred and fifty even. Okay. So there we are. We can just copy this over. Okay. And then how do we solve for our ending inventory? So how many batches do we still have left? We still have twelve hundred. We still have 1,200, right? 200 from this batch and 1,000 from the last batch. So you can calculate it per item if you'd like to solve for the ending inventory. But in this case, I'm going to simplify it and just go straight forward and go, this is what I have available. This is what I sold. So therefore, I should have $7,402 left remaining. Okay? All right? So... Is everyone good so far now? A little more comfortable? Again, we're going to practice this more and more and more. Any questions? Okay. I'm lost, but I think once I figure out how to open it in Excel and really see okay. it on a full screen and print it out, it might make more sense to me. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Okay, let me go ahead and save this one. So I'll save it. So I'll place it into the Google Classroom in case you do need an extra uh, example again. So let me just save it real quick. Um, Let's see, where did I put this? So costing method, exercises. Okay, so I'm gonna take this name. Except I'm gonna name it FIFO. Exercise, oh, exercise FIFO 2. All right, and I'm gonna save this in your student files. Oh, I gotta put answers. And then you're going to post it with the answers, correct? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm, this is it. This is the answers right here uh, for this one. But the previous one that we did, I will post the answers. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so student answers. So I'll save it here. And today is 3... 16. 16. All right, so this is for your class. All right, so I'm going to... Stop this.